Welcome back, everyone. Great to have you here today on our Total Wellness Tuesday episode of the Cabral Concept, where we are going to be talking about the longevity nutrient. Now, it's been gaining in popularity over the past three to four years, and for good reason. This specific nutrient actually comes from vitamin B3. It is a specific extract that we'll be talking about, and it helps to improve your brain and nervous system, your vascular system, cardiovascular, so blood pressure and cardiovascular, lymph system, reproduction kidneys, liver, pancreas, muscles, fat burning, and much more. And there's three main ways that you can make more of it. One is through good quality nutrition. Two is through exercise. And number three is through what's called NAD boosters, because the actual molecule that we're talking about here today is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, NAD, sometimes said as NAD+. And although taking NAD does not really work as of right now, there are a lot of companies out there that's trying to uh, sell an NAD product, doesn't seem to be absorbed uh, orally as well. So the two nutrients that are given are NMN, which stands for nucle- uh, so which stands for nicotinamide mononucleotide, and then there's NR, which is nicotinamide riboside. So instead of saying uh, nicotinamide mononucleotide, I'll be saying NMN today. And then for NR, which is nicotinamide riboside, the goal of both of those nutrients, okay, or the goal of both of those molecules is to do one thing though, and that is to boost NAD. So why is this important? Because as we age, literally after the age of about 30 years old, it depends on the individual, but it's right around there, NAD levels begin to decline. When they begin to decline, we have less ability to control overall inflammation. I'm not going to go over the sirtuins-based process today, but I will do that on our future show. We can't replicate DNA as well. There are breakdowns. And we also lose a lot of our mitochondrial energy-based function. So again, this has been studied for some time now. And I was waiting to share with you really what I've been doing myself the last three or four years. I've talked about that before. And a product cell boost that I use, but I want to share with you why I choose to use NMN over NR. And so I want to go through those two right now. Essentially, how it works is that NMN and NR are precursors to NAD. But the difference is that NMN has what's called an extra phosphate group attached. So if you look at the two molecules, I might add it to today's show notes, which is just episode 2300, uh, stephencabral.com forward slash 2300, that if you look at the two molecules, the molecular structure of each, very, very similar. What you'll find is on, if you're looking at it on a 2D grid, on the left-hand side, you're just going to simply see an extra phosphate group. That's it. Now, that is why, though, there's pros and cons to NMN versus NR. A lot of people in the beginning initially did move towards NR because NR simply needed less of a process in order to become NAD. But now there seems to be at least as good of research, if not potentially better, on why NMN may be overall better as an actual nutrient. The the interesting thing is that we don't fully know why and how this is happening, but we do know both nutrients now work. We that's why also again I always want to stand biased. NR does work. There was worries in the beginning about what's called hepatotoxicity. That means the amount for the liver to be able to handle. So it's interesting. They first did, um, well, they did yeast studies, then they did mouse studies, and they've done now human studies. And they were looking for liver toxicity, kidney toxicity, flushing, nausea, and I think they looked at blood sugar as well. And they found in both NMN, none of those issues happened. And NR, the same thing. This was actually fairly surprising to the researchers because both of these molecules from NAD get converted to nicotinamide, which is vitamin B3 and nicotinamide taken at high dosages actually causes flushing at the skin and can cause nausea. Now, The reason that it is believed that this doesn't happen is because of actually a certain um, enzyme or gene that it links onto at the actual epithelial or skin-based cells. So when you take NMN and you take 
and R, it actually doesn't lead to the same flushing issues that you would get when you take high dosage of vitamin B3 in the nicotinamide-based form. Now, I'm not saying there's not a time and place for doing a uh, like sauna flush or that type of thing, B3 flush, nice and flush, whatever you want to call it. I just know that most people are very uncomfortable with that, especially at that high dosage that's being used. The other thing I want to share with you is this, that originally it was, it was thought that you needed to use 250, 500, or maybe even 1,000 milligrams of NMN or NR in order to be able to get clinically significant results. What they found on three blood studies, uh, three blood tests with 100 milligrams, 250 milligrams, and 500 milligrams is what is that NAD levels were actually elevated, and same with the metabolites of NAD, by taking 100 milligrams, 250, or 500. Now, the more you took, the greater the elevation was. So that is absolutely, uh, without a doubt, true. I've been I've studied Dr. David Sinclair's work for some time. I've studied uh, Dr. Joseph Bauer. I believe that's how he pronounces his last name, and many many other people. I've looked at all the independent research and all the independent studies. I wanted to make sure that it was very safe before I ever recommended it. Again, I've been using it myself for almost four years now. Uh, I use it along with other longevity-based nutrients, which I'm not going to go into today, like transresveratrol, astragalus, etc., quercetin. Um, but I could share a little bit more about that later. But simply, I wanted to give you the efficacy behind it today and also why I believe we know now more. And there's two interesting takeaways. So if you're someone that's in this biohacking field and you really want to boost your energy and your longevity and, again, your health span, which means like living longer but not deteriorating at the same time, living longer and feeling vibrant and living a great energetic-based life. But that's hopefully what I do think that we want. So two interesting parts of the NMN and NR research was this. The first is that we have to take them in oral form. So it has to uh, get broken down in the gut microbiome, which we don't know all the enzymes involved there and, and how actually transformation could take place there, but also it has to pass through the liver. So whatever's left getting in the bloodstream may not even be that much. Meaning like in the long run, when we have a better way of getting NAD into the body through NMN, NR, or straight NAD, it seems the dosage may not need to be as high. Because what seems to be interesting is only a small amount ever may get into the bloodstream after it passes through the gut microbiome and the liver, because it has to pass through there first if you're doing it orally. And that means that it's good news. We might be able to use fractions of a dose in the future if we can deliver this in another way. The sublingual dosages have not, um, I haven't seen great research to say that they work any better, so that's been fairly interesting. That means that there may be enzymes that are used during digestion or in the gut or in the liver that actually make it work better. And so, again, that's another thing to keep your mind open to. So, <coughs> excuse me, I'm getting all choked up. Uh, two parts to this as well, though. The reason why I ended up going with NMN is this. There's twofold. One is that NR wasn't giving clinically better significant results, so clinically significant results, unless it was injected. So again, I'm always saying I'm biased. If you inject NR directly into the muscles, then, or and that wasn't even intravenously, into the muscles, then it did seem to boost it in the muscle tissue. But unless you did that, if you took it orally, it did not give greater benefit. The second part was this. When there's very few head-to-head -head studies, but when NMN was given at about 200 or 250 milligrams versus the same dosage for NR, the NMN improved endurance and mitochondrial function for that endurance, but NR did not. So they're pretty close head-to-head. -head. There's very few differences they seem to be well tolerated at least to 500 milligrams a day. There seems to be a plateauing effect, at least what David Sinclair says, after maybe about nine days to two weeks, which I'll give you my kind of loading phase in just a moment. And the last part is that um, I like taking a raw material-based form of something and allowing the body to use it as it sees fit. I found that from a natural, a naturopathy-based perspective, that's the healthiest way to do it. So when we look to boost hormones in men or women, we'll, do, we'll, we'll use all sorts of different, uh, based on what they're deficient in. It might be vitamins, it might be minerals, it could be decreasing sympathetic nervous system stress, whatever it might be, right? But we can also use DHEA. 
Short term if the person's younger, or maybe longer term if they're 55, 60 plus. But the interesting thing about DHEA, not only does it boost the immune system, helps balance healthy levels of inflammation, et cetera, et cetera, but it flows down to testosterone. It could flow over to, um, well, it can flow over to certain forms of uh, testosterone. I'm not going to get into that today, seven keto, et cetera, but it could flow down to uh, different forms of estrogen as well, or it could preferentially save more of the estradiol. Um, and I would say even the androstenedione dion and cortisol as well on the other side of the sex hormone flow chart. All that to say is that if you give the body the raw material DHEA, it can go in many different pathways and it, your body innately knows what it's supposed to do with it. Now, if you were to just give testosterone, well, that's when we sometimes run into problems, right? And if you just give estrogen, unless you're really watching your levels, we can run into problems, right? Certain types of cancer. Now, in cardiovascular issues, et cetera. I feel the same way, at least for now, I'm always erring the side of caution, that NMN with that extra phosphate group, more to donate, more to be broken down, not telling your body exactly what to do with it, but it can do with it as it chooses and make more NAD if needed, and you allow for that, and even allow for more, even if it's just an extra phosphate group, more closer to what you would take in through foods or other different types of production by the body, that that may be the safer route right now. So I err on the side of caution. This has been studied now for some time, but I like to also go lower dosage and more of the, the raw material-based dosage instead of giving you pinpoint what your body is supposed to be taking. I always don't like to tell, I don't like to tell my body what to do. I like to give it the raw material, and my body, through all of its uh, inner workings and chemistry, is able to do what I or no one else knows what goes on inside of the body. You know, oftentimes, um, PhDs, doctors, et cetera, we all tend to believe that we know more than we really do. And so what I like to share with you is that there is literally a miraculous uh, ecosystem going on inside of our body. We know a lot, but what we want to do is we want to work with the body and not exactly tell it what to do. I think that's really important as we go forward. So there is two ways to do this. Um, I do use um, NMN myself, and I use it with a product called Cell Boost. So I use it with transresveratrol, I use it with astragalus, I use it with quercetin, I use it with PQQ, and a bunch of other nutrients that have all been shown to work synergistically together. I really like that. So that is why I also use them at a lower dosage. So it enables me to get in the nutrients that I need, allow my body to use what it wants, and not overload it. And, and so I like that. However, I will say this, this there is potentially some clinical significance to this, that for the first two to four weeks, you may want to double the dosage. So you may want to double your dosage of maybe even transresveratrol, but certainly you could double the dosage of NMN or NR. So you get the 250 milligrams if you wanted to, and what David Sinclair and others say is you almost supersaturate your results up front. Instead of waiting maybe, it's kind of like creatine, instead of may, maybe waiting a month to get the results, well, with creatine, if you front load it, you can get the results within a period of about a week to maybe 14 days. It seems like you may be able to do the same with uh, boosting NAD levels. So I wanted to bring you the latest and greatest research. I also wanted to bring that from an unbiased perspective. There are many different brands out there. You should always choose the reputable brand that you feel comfortable with. And I will do multiple follow-ups to this show if you're ever interested in uh, me doing one on transrosferitrol or astragalus or how they interact or what sirtuins are uh, and, and the overall health span and anti-aging based process. So thank you so much as always for your support of the show. Again, let me know if there's any questions and please do feel free to share the show with anyone you believe it could serve. 